Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of the Lord. Christ. Thank you. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. On 14th Street in Washington, D.C., there is a six-story building that has the phrase, Come unto me, in very large red letters displayed prominently near the top of the building. The building was once occupied by the Central Union Mission, a Christian nonprofit organization. From this building, they ministered for years to many homeless, poor, and hungry people in a neighborhood that had been scarred by the 1968 riots that erupted after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. You might have guessed by now that the come unto me emblazoned on this building is from the well-known end of today's gospel passage. I expect that Central Union Mission placed that phrase on their building as encouragement and comfort to the people they served and to those who lived in the neighborhood that surrounded them. And those verses at the end of today's gospel are indeed comforting, aren't they? Those of you familiar with the 1928 prayer book or the right one form of the Eucharist will recognize these verses as the comfortable words said by the priest after confession and absolution. These comforting, familiar words are an invitation offered by Jesus to those who are carrying heavy burdens. To us. Let's hear them again. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What exactly is Jesus offering here? Let's take a look more closely. You noticed, I imagine, that Jesus uses the word yoke twice in this invitation. And a yoke, as you probably know, is a wooden frame by which a pair of animals, usually oxen, are joined together at their heads or necks. It consists of a crossbar with two bow-shaped pieces that enclose the heads of the animals. The yoke allows the two animals to work together as a team to pull or carry something. At the time of Jesus, the yoke was very familiar, both as a tool and as a symbol. As a tool, it was placed across the necks of the oxen who pulled the heavy carts and plows. As well, it was placed across the shoulders of prisoners of war and slaves as a symbol of their subjugation and oppression. And the word was also used in metaphors with positive connotations as well. For example, yoke was used as a rabbinic metaphor for the difficult but joyous task of obedience to the Torah. So these different kinds of yokes, what is Jesus talking about when he offers us his yoke? For one, this is not a yoke imposed upon us by Jesus. Jesus is not using the yoke in the same way as the powerful did to subjugate others. Instead, Jesus is inviting us to share his yoke, to be his yoke mate. Here Jesus is revealing a God who wants to accompany us, who wants to bear our struggles with us. As well, Jesus tells us his yoke is easy. The Greek word translated as easy in our uh, Bible verse can also be translated as good or kind. The people of Jesus' time would have known that a good yoke is one that is carefully shaped so that there is a minimum of chafing on the animal's neck as it pulls its load one that allowed the pair of animals to work together more easily to share their burden. Therefore, if Jesus' yoke is good, is kind, is easy, 
I think we can expect it to be gentle on our metaphorical shoulders, allowing us to carry our burdens more easily. But Jesus asks us not only to take his yoke, but to learn from him. But this is not a cognitive kind of learning, the kind that we usually do in school. For the Greek word that has been translated as learn is rela related to the word meaning disciple. Thus, you can argue that when Jesus asks us to learn from him, he is offering an invitation to discipleship, an invitation to changing our way of being. The kind of learning that we need for this is less about intellect and more about our way of being, our way of life. And thus, our learning must be like what happens in an apprenticeship. An apprentice learns by listening, but more importantly, learns by doing, by watching and imitating what his or her teacher is doing. As disciples of Jesus, we do the same. We watch and we imitate Jesus's example. And so if we think of ourselves as apprentices to Jesus, this invitation to share a yoke takes on new meaning. In effect, Jesus is saying, work beside me and watch how I pull the load. The labor will seem lighter when you allow me to help you. This, this is what makes his burden light. So that building in DC, the one with come unto me displayed so prominently, as you might have inferred from my earlier comments, it is no longer occupied by the Central Union Mission. The neighborhood in which the building is found has been transformed in the last decade because of the gentrification that has swept through much of Washington. This neighborhood has been redeveloped and is currently filled with hip housing, happening restaurants, and cute little stores. The building itself has been refurbished into upscale apartments. Yet, the developer left the Come Unto Me sign on it. That invitation that once served as comfort to the urban poor now beckons the wealthy professionals who live, work, and dine out near the intersection of 14th and R Streets. And initially, you might think that having come unto me emblazoned on this building is now misplaced. You might think, oh, well, that was needed back then, when those decades following the riots, but maybe not so much now. Yet, for who needs more comfort than the people who used to inhabit this neighborhood and whom Central Union Mission served. Yet I think the current denizens of this gentrified neighborhood also need the comfort of these words found on the building. They too need to hear Jesus' invitation to come to him, to share his yoke, to learn from him. And we do too. For each one of us carries heavy burdens of one kind or another, burdens of suffering, loss, failure, fear, responsibility, injustice. Jesus does not promise us a life free from these burdens, but his words today reveal to us a God who is full of compassion, who will help shoulder these burdens. Jesus bids us to come to him, to join him at the yoke, a kind, a good yoke. With Jesus next to us, showing us how to pull our loads, walking beside us every step of the way, he will indeed make our burdens light. So will you say yes? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the living God, saying, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, for the Anglican Communion and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Episcopal Church and for Michael, our presiding bishop, for the Episcopal Diocese of Pittsburgh and for Ketlin, our bishop, for Sheldon Calvary Camp, for all who seek God with childlike faith and simplicity, fill your church with grace, compassion, and kindness. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all members of the Jewish community, particularly our friends of Tree of Life Congregation, that they may find courage and strength as the penalty phase of the trial continues. For all who live in fear of violence, war, or terror, for migrants and refugees, for those serving in the armed forces, particularly Christine, Trace, Robert, John, Chris, George, and Brian, for their families and for the safe return of those far from home. Give humility to all who govern and restore hope to all who live in fear. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the blessings of this life, we give thanks for the 30th anniversary of the ordination of the Reverend William H. Marshall III. All your works praise you and your faithful people bless you. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who carry heavy burdens, for Erica, Elise, Diane, Ruth, Henry, Margaret, Stephen, Paula, Phyllis, Jamie, Marianne, Patty, Richard, Mary, Kieran, Phyllis, Stan, Mildred, Cam, Thomas, Joan, Genevieve, Judith, Tony, Michael, Maggie, Luke, Becca, William, and all those who have been commended to our prayers. For people throughout the world living with HIV and AIDS, for people suffering from COVID-19 and for their loved ones, for those struggling with addiction and those in recovery, for strength for caregivers and healthcare workers, for those whom we now name. Gentle Lord, give rest to the souls of those who are weary. Living God, in your mercy. For those who have died. For Betty Carlson. For those in whose memory altar flowers are given today. James Marshall, Mary Cook McGuff, Norman C. and Jean Marshall McGuff, and C.I. Peter for victims of gun violence, for those who mourn, for those whom we now remember. Bring them to the glorious splendor of your eternal kingdom. Living God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Episcopal Church, it's nice to see you on this warm and rainy July morning. We extend a special welcome to you who are visiting or newcomers and invite you to fill out one of the newcomer cards or visitor cards that are in the uh, pew back in front of you. Um, and if you do, place it in the um, offertory plate as it comes through or hand it to one of the clergy on your way out the door and we will be glad to contact you this week and get to know you and find out how we can help you learn more about Calvary. Uh, today, the rector, Jonathan, is away. He is preaching at Trinity Cathedral downtown. The dean of the cathedral, Aidan Smith, is away on medical leave, and so Jonathan has gone down to help with preaching and uh, with the schedule. The used book sale is coming. It's in August. I am so excited. Um, we need volunteers, though, to help with the sorting and organizing um, uh, for, of the donations. There's information in the bulletin about how to volunteer if you would like to do that. We're still taking donations, and we really hope that you will be here August 11th to 20th to come and buy books and support the uh, literacy and educational um, organizations of Southwest Pennsylvania. Christian Formation for Children is also looking for volunteers. We're looking for classroom assistants in the faith formation classes this fall and this upcoming school year. Um, so it's, there is a lead teacher. We're not asking you to be one of the lead teachers. We're asking you to be one of the assistants. So you help with managing the kids and supporting the teachers and supporting the learning that happens in the classroom. We need two adults in each classroom because of safe church guidelines. So um, if you are interested in this, please check out the uh, announcement in the bulletin insert. Or if you're not sure and want to find out more, please contact Vicki uh, Rispoli, who is the Director of Children's Formation, and she can tell you all about it. Violins of Hope is coming to Pittsburgh this fall. Um, it has been, we've talked about it a little bit in the Friday e-blast. They're collecting used musical instruments this summer and these instruments will be re refurbished for use by school children. So if you have a musical instrument in a closet somewhere that you don't use any longer, we invite you to consider donating it to Violins of Hope. Calvary is a collection site, and uh, they will be here on the mornings of July 22nd and July 30th. So you have a little while to search through your closets and find those old instruments and donate them if you would like to do so. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always.
Let us bless the Lord. 